<laughs> Did you get your social security check this month? Yep. Yeah, I get my social security. Mr. Burby, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but the young people's talent. Thank you, young people, for working and paying my social security because the politicians stole all our money, you know. Mr. Burbage will be glad to tell you about that. What a reason to steal it from me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Let's give him a hand, folks. And, and while Bill's concentrating on this, let's get a picture of, of cutting the cake. Dave, get up here by the cake and this movie cotton pot so we can see. In, uh, you want to get America's going to be watching this? Yeah. You want to, um, I thought you were going to take the cake over there. Okay. All right. I had to use this knife. Coming over here. Well, they're going to they're going to make you walk all that way when they could have set it right there in front of you. No respect for old people. All right. I can't believe it's making you walk all the way. Let's do it. Like every, every other place in America that people go to drink coffee, you know, they were going to change the world and, you know, I guess we, you know, going to do the same thing. So uh, it started out at Lizard Sticker. Uh, we started out in the booth and then we got a table. Um, I guess about 10 years in, 10 or 12 years in, dad retired. He could, you know, my dad had a very gregarious guy. So he kind of just took over the, the deal. So if you didn't show up, um, $5. You know, it was, it was he would find you five dollars. You know, saying all this, and when you walked in the door, he'd say, "You give me my money," and all this kind of stuff like that. And then when um, brunches opened up, I guess that was what maybe seven or eight years later. Steve? Well, tell the story how brunches opened. We were down at Lizard Sticket, and the, yeah. the cook and the guy driving. Yeah, the truck. but well, actually, yeah, the, the, actually, Mark or ran Lizard Sticket. He was a he was a military guy, and he was like a KP guy, and um, he he ran the Lizard Sticket down there, and. Um, and Teresa was our waitress, and T Teresa's been, well, she doesn't wait on me now because we're not there, but Teresa's actually waited on me for 25 years. Um, so anyway, uh, Mark and the guy that uh, worked for Cisco, what was, it, what was his name? I forgot his name right now. Um, yeah, I can't think of his name right now. But anyway, they, they started. But brunches. anyway, they started brunches, and then they, of course, we left there and went to brunches, and that's when uh, we started bringing in all the politicians. And um, well, remember Bob State? We had him down. And, and uh, yeah, we started with Bob down that, there. Lizard lit, stick. Bob came in for running for a superintendent of education, the statewide race on the first one we had, uh -huh. and then Bob Peeler had uh, just attempted to run for governor, and we had him come by just to. He was he was support person for for uh, Bob, they friends. But yeah. anyway, it was interesting and tell them about the stadium issue. That that's when I first got into the mafia. The stadium issue was a local issue. Yeah. Everybody was all built stadium at uh Brooklyn Casey High School and of course, you know, it got to be a kind of a little bit of a political football between Airport High School and B C high school. And of course, you know, we were B C guys so we wanted the stadium. Of course we still don't have a stadium in America, so uh, I guess we we probably we did, probably didn't win that one, but but Steve Steve's really taken this to a different level. 
um, some of which I told him I like and some said <laughs> not too fond of, but um, he's taken it to a different level. He and Dad and Steve were really good friends. And, um, and, Dad, the, and the Christmas tree. And and the, yeah, and the Christmas You promised him about the Christmas tree. I didn't promise anybody about the Christmas tree. So, so Steve's kept the Christmas tree going. But anyway, it, it's good to be here. And I always told, I always pick with Steve about the Casey Mafia. It's, it's, it's not random acts of killing. It's, we try to do random acts of kindness. So it's, it's a little bit different mafia. You're not going to get, you know, you know. I didn't get that, man. You didn't get that? No. Yeah. You're, 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 you're in trouble. Uh -oh. But anyway, if anybody's got any questions, I'll, you know, take them. If you don't, then. Oh, that's why you're building stadiums. Then the black, the black limo. Out. I'll see you later. Well, well tell me about your dad's philosophy. You know, we had, uh, we had, there were permission had to be given originally to even come to the meeting. I, I got invited. I got an yeah. invitation to come. Yeah. You were not, no, not everyone to come. Yeah. And I, we had a, a lady that you know I thought was good, yeah. Darlene. Yeah. To come. And I got permission from your dad to let her come. And other people got upset about that. Yeah. Well, you had to get permission to come yeah. to the meeting. It was, uh, it was a private club yeah. um, of guys and you know he, Mickey sat there for like two or three years before, <coughs> before we asked him to join the group right, right. he sat at a table with Jason to, to us it's <laughs> not that didn't speak right here. I, I was there on other days at the same uh, table however <laughs> but anyway so he was asked to join a little bit later but um it's, it's been fun, um, it's changed a little bit, but uh, it's, it's all good. It's, we've, had a good we've had a good time. And, and uh, Steve, like I said, Steve's really taken this thing over and, and made it what it is today. And well, I, I got passed on somebody else eventually, and, you know, but, and the Christmas trees too, but we all do, we got passed, and we want the thing to yeah. continue, everything to continue. But Dave, what's, what, what happened, what have you seen evolve in terms of the group over the years? You've seen people come in and out, and, well, I, you know, in all honesty, the um, the core group um, was they were not that interested in politics. You know, it was just a bunch of guys. Well, just, what happened when they were talking about the stadium and all these other issues? Well, I mean, you know, that was just lo real local stuff. You know. Um, well, now some of them supported supporting uh, Giuliani for president. Mm -hmm. Remember that? You to make well, I, I mean, that's when it evolved. That's when it started getting, you know, right, right, political. So, I mean, everybody, you know, Paul Giuliano shows up with. Paul Giuliano for mayor and Bob Malpas is sitting at the table. You know, and he's running against Paul. You, you want to, now, David, tell her, you're, not, you're, you're not taking sides or anything. Tell them a story about the cups at the table. They're That's all, what I said. They, 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 they brought you know Paul Giuliano cups and put them out all to everybody at everybody's at table. You know, yeah. seat. And um, Bob Malpas, the guy that was running, and his wife show up. And his wife show up. And um, well, I didn't. I didn't think out of a Paul Giuliano cup that day because. Uh, I didn't want to just upset anybody. <laughs> but it, it was, and then somebody did something with your dad's picture on the wall, remember? Somebody stuck uh, up something under your dad's picture. Yeah, but I, we knew who that was. Well, yeah. Yes. <laughs> All, and, and, and John, after John passed away, we had his picture on the wall. John Diamond, um, yeah. You know, it's a whole lot with, with Bill's picture. We needed to get another copy of that picture or something down here. But we need to get another copy of Bill's picture. My mom has asked that we keep that picture okay. at the um, brunches, so we'll, you know, we'll keep it there as long as she's alive. So. Okay. But anyway, it's all been good. Yeah, it's all been good. It's, it's uh, heart, the heart and soul of this area was with John Diamond yeah. and this, uh, this idea right here. That's right. This, this concept <coughs> of everybody's included, and that's what John talked about. Everybody. As long as you're invited. Well, well now, now it's no, uh, everybody's invited. Now. You don't have to be invited yeah. now. So yeah. it's, it's a little bit different because that, that was always your dad's philosophy, really. Well, dad's philosophy was, yeah, you know, changed that he didn't want to make it, you know, just the group that was invited or, or they would bring their somebody in or something like that. Yeah. Um, and tell them about the other good stuff that a lot of people don't know about your dad. He was involved with the Masonic Lodge. Yeah. And they had his little meetings after the meeting, and somehow they let me sit in with the Masonic Lodge discussions. Yeah. And they had golf tournaments and all these other things. But today is the golf tournament in honor of Dad and Reuben Dunlap. So you can tell I'm leaving here to go play tell golf. Tell me Reuben Dunlap was. So well, Reuben Dunlap was the guy who was really involved in the community. Um, and they were really involved in the lodge. Um, and they spent a lot of time out there. That shed, they built, they built a real nice building up there on, on 12th Street. And um, 
Reuben, actually the shed is named for Reuben. I don't know if they put the money for up for the shed or whatever. But he was really involved. So we have a golf tournament now. We played this morning. We got 20 teams, which is really good. And we got 18 hole sponsors. So hopefully we're going to make about $8,000 for the lodge today. And to say, over time, there's been a lot of fundraisers for different events right. for the community. You want to talk about some of those? Well, I mean, well, you guys see a lot of things that go on, and of course, this, this like every other group, is just an outreach. You go do, the, you know, you go do different things that you know you have a passion for, um, and we've raised money. The Christmas trees, right? They raised money for the Sasagaba uh, group. Um, but, but to be honest with you, Steve, Steve is really the one that's taken this over and brought in the guy, the folks that are running for political office and kind of held their feet to the fire because when you get in front of this camera like I am today, you can't go down the street and tell somebody something else. And I think that's very important from a transparency standpoint. And Steve's worked really hard for that. He's worked hard at city council and he now he's working hard on a, on a, like a local level, on, on the county level, to ensure that um, somebody that's running for office can't tell you, and he's accused me of doing this, but what you want here. <laughs> well, well Dave, I can't be very blunt and direct sometimes, and, but, but uh, Dave and I have been friends, and, and uh, we just sometimes just real things, and that's okay, and, and I don't hesitate to tell him. And sometimes people you're closest with take the biggest blunt of things when you are totally honest with them. But uh, Dave, Dave I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be on council now if Dave had not help me with a campaign and done all this stuff. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be there, and that's true. Um, but. David understands politics in this area better than anybody. He, he understands, he can read people really well. Now, but David is a politician to some extent. He'll, he'll tell you what you want to hear. So you got to get through that little thing. Is it David? <laughs> but he'll got to work through to get to the other side, which I guess would be the truth man. or some part of it. Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> uh, call Slim thing. Is that the idea of knocking down all the homes? From 8th Street down toward BC High School? No. Or, uh, oh, sure. Not at all. Okay, uh, uh, it was just to build a stadium. Like that. It was, was to build a stadium right there. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, old yeah, power yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the uh, Holly yeah. yeah. Because they did have a yeah. thing yeah. up about a uh, 2,000 seat uh, Coliseum yeah. or a stadium and a $2,000 uh, uh, parking lot that was going to take in the all from 8th Street down. So I didn't like that at all. Because that would have been my house. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been my, my mom's house. Uh, <laughs> well, Dave, the other person in the room that's been seeing this is Mickey up here in the corner. It's always quiet. It's one of the unusual things Mickey's done since I've seen known him is selling birdhouses, even though he's a professional photographer. He was having trouble, you know, taking photos of, bird, of birds, so he gets these sales, these bird houses, and, and he actually gets close ups of them. But Mickey, what's, what have you observed? Mickey's a, a singer, photographer, Santa Claus, and everything. They, they, this, I got to go play golf. Okay. Play golf. <laughs> Mickey, what have you what have you seen change over all this time in the business? You, you've been watching this evolution of the of the group. Well, it's been a fun fun ride in that area. Uh, it's changed from sports to politics, pretty much. Uh, and uh, as far as the sports was concerned, it was whatever was in season uh, was what was talked about. And uh, so, same thing in the political arena. Whatever's in season is what gets talked right. about. Right. So, uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's been great. And, and it's been, I think Bill West may have been the one that, that said this first, but it's a group that comes together, speaks their mind, agree or disagree, and next week come back and do the same thing over, and nobody, you know, <laughs> Has or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, has it been the Mafia ever since you started it? No. We named it the Cajun Mafia probably, I don't know, probably 15 years ago. And it was just a joke. Somebody walked by the table one day, and I can't remember who it was. They walked by the table and said, What is this? The Casey Mafia. And I can't remember who it was. It was Probably like my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember who it was? I don't remember. They said, what is this, the Casey Mafia? And it kind of stuck. Huh. So that's where the Casey Mafia name came from. Alan, do you have a question? Yes. Um, that was a great um, history, and here we are now. That's right. Where do we go from here? 
What, what, well, what's your vision for the future? Well, for the, this group, the, the, the vision is a philosophy of, of freedom and the discussion of ideas without feeling that you're constrained in any way. You know, you want to be respectful to talk about things. And it's all sorts of things. It's not just <coughs> politics. I mean, like, whether it's fundraising or if somebody like Mickey brought in his birdhouses one time, or anybody, you know, we've got book writers, we've got writers, we've got people who, uh, like Mr. Gates, who does all, all sorts of things. And any topic that comes up, but you, you, there's, there's a natural organization of things that can happen when you have people that have different interests and ideas are exchanged. So it's an open forum for discussion. Not just to, to be on the video or anything like that, but but have open discussion. It's civil. I mean, if it's any discourse, it's so, civil. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? Hi, good morning. Good morning. Sorry, didn't mean to walk good right into this. Good morning. I know right now you've got a lot of emphasis on the political arena because that's in season, like you just said. Um, when that's over with, um, we, we begin to try to establish some agendas that yeah, are, we, you know, we, we have formal agendas sometimes. We need stru a lot of structure. But a lot of times, it, it's, especially when people kind of know each other, um, and most of us have met here before, we, we kind of know what to expect. Mm -hmm. And the other good thing about, about this group is, it's, you know, to me, it's most entertaining not to know what to expect. I don't know what's going to happen here. <laughs> I, that, not having a structure to some extent is important, that freedom, the flexibility. If something breaking news happens or something happens in somebody's life, a car wreck, whatever, that can be discussed here. And if you have a rigid agenda, you eliminate those things that, right. that can be discussed. So the future, nobody knows the future, but the flexibility is in the group to discuss and vet issues and, uh, of all sorts of things. So I don't, I, the, the mystery <coughs> of, of this is not knowing answer but the process. The process is still the same. As human nature is, it remains the same. But it's a balance. And, and, and it, again, this, this group it, it extends to the whole state. We've had guests from other states and, and here. And a couple of weeks ago we had a guy from Australia the first time. But the ideas are universal. The ideas of justice and freedom and wanting to discuss ideas in your life and in your neighbor's lives. And those things cross boundaries and borders. It's a great thing. It feels good. Alan, what's your opinion? You've been here a couple of times. You're I, I like I like coming here. Um, sorry, I couldn't be here last week. I had another early morning appointment, but um, I I enjoy these types of things. Um, uh, I have similar conversations with my pastor. My my wife happens to work at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, and and the pastor over there is a young guy. I mean, these guys are in their 40s. And, and I mean, they'll go out and have a beer with you and sit down and talk about life. Okay. And, you know, it's not it's not always about religion. Just, just because you have a conversation with the pastor doesn't mean Now, see, this, this group naturally evolves into this next question I'm about to ask. And you, you see how things get. I mean, now, so you talk talking about drinking. And so the alcohol level has to get to what point before you have these nice conversations? <laughs> <laughs> One beer. <laughs> One beer. Is that, is that, is that on an empty stomach or on a plate? I better help out now. April 20th, Friday, here in South Carolina. Alan Hunter is a candidate, and this has nothing to do with his candidacy. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, just oh, he's putting me on the side. <laughs> <laughs> so just to help you out, we're just making yeah. like a general comment there. Yeah. All right, well. <laughs> how's Barbara? Hi, Keith. Hey, how's Barbara? How are you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, how's Barbara? She's doing good. So, <laughs> any other questions? See how this is going to be, be, be evolve, evolve into a conversation on something else, but this, this is kind of what the group's about. So. So today, uh, does any, any politician want to say anything? So far, everyone wanted we, Phil Black. Mr. Phil Black's going to uh, have a few <coughs> Hey, what time is it, folks? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. David's got to go with me. How much time you got, David? 10 minutes. Well, you got David, minutes. You got I'm David. Minutes. I know how to get there on time. <laughs> I, well, I saw I noticed you had your Bible. I didn't know where you Well, this is how we got started in this country. And I don't deviate from that. That's the basics. That was the first and beginning of our United States. Then from the Bible came our Constitution. Okay? We have deviated so far from those two things. What we need is a religious revival. I've been accused of being the Reverend Mr. Black, that ain't true. We also need a political revival. 
So what I'm trying to come across is, if you'll give me a chance, I will give us a political revival in Washington. I am a renegade. I do not go by the conformed political agenda. I have four promises. One, I will only take a salary of $38,000, not $164,000, $38,000. I will stay only four years. I will give you term limitations. I will stay with the health care program I've got. I will stay with my retirement. And the other night, I was in Aiken with Joe. And this is something that upside I... Down. Upside, upside down. Upside down. Okay. I told you I wasn't politically correct. But anyway... Just <laughs> 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 Anyway, <laughs> there are 13,000 lobbyists. Fifteen of the largest corporations pay more in lobbyist fees than they do in corporate taxes. So we have a problem. If I'm elected, uh, there will be no lobbyist allowed in my office. I will talk to any corporate employee, any corporate executive. I am free I am of mind of what we need to do. It's back to the basics. Free enterprise. What do we look at? We got to eliminate. I was on Lexington School Board one. Part of education needs to be taken away from Washington. 1976, it was founded. Okay, how do we educate our kids prior to that? We didn't need Washington to tell us how to do it. Every kid's not the same. To educate a kid in South Carolina is not the same as you do in California. Okay? So back to the basics. This is my story. All I ask you to do is, I'm not asking for campaigns. I have a budget, $5,000 is all I am going to spend. And I had spent $3,460 to get my name on the ballot. So we start with political reform. I ain't buying the office. What I want is not your contributions. I want the most precious thing you got. I want your vote. June the 12th, please come out and vote. Thank you very much, and may God bless. Last call for the politicians. Anybody else? Out? I'll just say hello. Chris, Chris, uh, this Harman. is my first time being here. I'm Chris Harmon. I'm your county auditor. Um, I'm the guy who sends you your property tax bill. So, oh. 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 Yeah, very popular. Uh, just you know, there's some hot water over here. But, uh, <laughs> I'm unopposed. Nobody really wanted the job of sending out the property tax bills. So, I wonder why. But, but I've got some cards. If um, anybody has questions or needs anything with stuff with the county, I'm here to help. Chris, I don't know if you remember this. I met you on the golf course when you were running for office that time, and I said that we needed some changes in that office. And Chris has done an excellent job up there. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. He really Great. has because he, the other individual wasn't nearly as accessible as, as you are. Well, I appreciate oh, that. That's a good job. Your folks are friendly and do an excellent job. Sometimes we have to tell you what you don't want to hear. But my, my, my mantra is, if I can help you, I will. If I can't, you can help I'm me going, I'm going, I'm going, <laughs> I'll try to tell you why I can't help you. <laughs> if someone can, or if you're just stuck. So I'm um, happy to be here. My, my, property, 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 property taxes property tax dropped hard. about half, so I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I send the bill. Unfortunately, I don't have any input in what goes into the bill, but I'll I'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> I'll give you my address. Are you, I think, I think, I think are you in charge of the, the, the office of town, or the the, 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 the tellers, and because the, they were very nice to me the other day, extremely nice. Yeah. 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 My office is when you come into the administration building, I'm to the left. But I don't know if they were extremely nice. They had to go take care of a tax issue on my home vehicle. They were very, very nice. Very nice. That's, that's because you were in that big cathedral that's dedicated to one thing. That's taking your money. Yeah, but well, you need to walk into the lobby the big sign saying every day is taxpayer appreciation day. You know, if you see if the they were paying you money, they wouldn't be so nice. <laughs> the whole building is dedicated toward taking your money. Y'all seen the DOT commercial where they're giving out the ice cream and the woman and, 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 and the, uh, the guy goes or the woman goes, thank you for my ice cream, and the lady, the lady goes, next. That's what yeah, that's what you kind of expect from from uh, state. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 Don, come, come on up here a second. This is going to be, this is a, this is a good segue for, uh, for Don Hopkins to come and talk about his book. Segway, isn't that machine that killed his yeah, arm? That's, that's a, that, yeah, the batteries are dead on, on most of the segways now. But Chris, Chris Harmon, Chris came today really because Don was here, okay, and uh, have Don talk about his book. 
his book. And, and hey, y'all, just give David Dime a hand. He's about to leave, right? Yeah. 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 Save me, save me a piece of cake. You know the most important golf shop, right? We'll save you the. You know, in my bag. <laughs> the next one. The next one. <laughs> Wait a minute, now you weren't, you weren't done. You just oh, kind of dumped okay. me on, but all right, good. All right, uh, Don, Don Humphreys will talk about he, talk about the book and talk about his sales and how much money he's gonna leave to the Casey Mafia and have to keep going or something like that <laughs> for the future. Um, uh, and I tell you another good writer here that but okay. Paul Greenfield. Paul's over here. Paul? Yes. Sir. You write for what magazine? Uh uh so um Parson <laughs> Paul Hunter <laughs> Parson Journal. Okay. All right. <laughs> and you got one of well I also sell And we got another writer over here. And I sell life insurance, so that you don't have to die to you, so and we got obviously an outstanding <laughs> reporter, senior editor for the Chronicle, Bill Article Bill West. Mr. Burbage writes for Wall Street Journal from time to time. Social Security is his specialty. So I, hate, I hate to even say that because it could trigger some of those reactions. All right. Mr. Burbage? Yeah, 1980 copyright hardback book. Mr. Belton Gaddis. Real solid book that deals with. Ethanol. Ethanol? Ethanol. 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 Ethanol.
when they're faced with a tragedy. A kid's tragedy is different than an adult tragedy, right? What do you say? So they're brainstorming in the clubhouse, and they come up, and, and Jackson, the the, uh, the leader of the group, a real smart kid, uh, formulates a plan, and uh, uh, it, it, it all uh, it all revolves around the uh, lost Confederate gold. So they do stumble into it, and it becomes a treasure hunt, and uh, a very exciting, uh, action-packed, dodging death type, hilarious <laughs> book. And in that, they form a, uh, an identity, and from here, they, they, they start uh, finding a lot of treasures that actually exist, but have never been found. And that's, that's the thesis of the, of the series. So if you get a chance, read it, please. And if you do read it, give me a review, Amazon.com. I read it on your book. I've got one. You got it. Give me a review, if you can, because that is the pretty much the vehicle. Well, it's a good book. Amazon, you've got the major six publishers. Now, I'm an indie yeah. author. And uh, it, that's in, that stands for independent author. Um, so, and what you have is you have six major publishers. And then you have Amazon. Amazon is like the seventh major pub publisher, but Amazon publishes independent books. The other six, you have to submit to industry one at a time and wait a year or two for usually a denial. And, give them and they've been sued by the federal J.K. Rowling was turned down 187 times, or it's some ungodly number. So a lot of people are going indie like I did. And there, there, there are a lot of books out there that that, that really um, didn't they didn't edit their you know there's a lot of unprofessional books. I tried to do this one professionally. It's got it's got some errors in it because I just had another edit done on it, and I have to admit that uh, my last editor didn't do a very good job. But it's still a good read. But Amazon.com has a rating system, and that for indie authors is pretty much the largest, um, the, the best way to, to get known is a review from Amazon. That's why I say, please give me an Amazon.com review. I've got 17 five-star reviews so far, and uh, uh, it's going well. Sales are great. I really appreciate the Casey Mafia and Steve and... and, and and Eddie, Eddie's the one that invited me. I was invited. Yeah! <laughs> okay? I didn't walk in. I was invited. Well, Eddie invites goes. everybody because Eddie needs friends. <laughs> he didn't have any. I, I thought he was selling bull peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've already told that story, but that's true. I thought he was selling bull peanuts, but he was uh, running, he's running for office. And uh, I didn't catch a good look at him. I was headed to the store. And uh, uh, turned around and said, I'm going to get some boiled peanuts on the way back. <laughs> now, the real, the real story, he's cleaning this up. He, he thought Eddie was an escaped convict on the side of the road trying to get some money. <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, he had all the signs up. And uh, uh, what else? Okay, I wanted to apologize for not being here. I, uh, this time of year, late spring, late fall, is tough on rheumatoid arthritis and last, uh, uh, two, of the, two of the three times they've been here I've been feeling bad but at a funeral uh, my aunt died in Alabama and uh, spent one weekend in Alabama so I apologize and, and, uh, and plus we hold this during when you would be like on Good Morning America or something like that I, you know what? I had to turn them down just to come here. I wasn't going to bring it up, but I'm going to mention that. Uh, Fox News wants me. Uh, did I say the wrong word? Fox News. No, I so watch it all the time. Can, can you divulge any names of people you're thinking of using for the movie? <laughs> for the movie? Well, Jefferson Davis. Uh, How about me? I'm you want to be? Yeah, I'll be an actor. I don't want to be an actor. Yeah. You can be. You can be Leon. Leon was uh, one of the bank robbers. Okay. <laughs> that, that's cool. Leon was a funny bank robber. And we can get Steve to be uh, Jake the Blade. 
<laughs> he beat up on Leon all the time. I, you, know, you have to read the book. It's funny. Uh, but listen, y'all, y'all check it out. And um, if he ever publishes, republishes his book, Mr. Uh, 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 Mr. Gate, please read. It is great. It tells of a time when uh, all they had was bootleg to stay alive. They sold bootleg to eat in this state. 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, we, we got our. Actually, longer than that, 50, 60 years ago. And it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful piece. Uh, anyway, read my book. Thank you for having me and making me feel so welcome here. I read you. Now, I read you. Did you get the autographs? Are you giving free autographs again today? Or I, they're they're free. Well, they shouldn't be. It cost me a dollar. <laughs> I bought one of your first books here. How much you pay for it? I don't know, six bucks or something. I'll pay six bucks, he got a six dollar discount. <laughs> hey, you no, I, I, I think it was twelve. I'll pay twelve bucks for mine. Yeah, I think it was twelve. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, uh -huh. wait a minute. I haven't sold any books here. What are you talking about? <laughs> you sold me one, twelve dollars. <laughs> <laughs> This is better than Amazon. What's going on here now? What you do is you give away the book for way free, and then you charge a dollar for the uh, autograph. I got to do this disclaimer with that one in here. You got to do this. America, they, they were just kidding about all this for the tax reasons, right? Tax reasons. I never sold any books. My wife didn't read any books. Mr. West, can I, didn't, didn't I give you a book? Mm -hmm. I did. See, I gave him one. He didn't get my way. Don, you don't have to escape from that for a second to long. I didn't want that, didn't I, Al? Before, yeah. yeah but Alan's got an idea for a book. <laughs> Actually, I do. And by the way, can I get a plug in? Since we have so many authors in the room, my wife is an editor. And I, I, she, she managed the proofreading department the third largest advertising agency in the world. And you got, you got I mean, all the she's, a, interest in good, she's already edited four books this oh, year. Wow. And, so, um, and she's attractive to boot again. Uh, so the man's uh -oh. And she's attractive. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, Keith. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Keith. But no, Keith, Keith and I were actually working on a book yeah, I, together I, for a while. Yeah, and we need to get we, back to that. We got to disconnect. Well, since so you brought that up, what, what's the title of the book? Um, well, we don't, have, we don't have a title yet. yet. I think we call it Chess City. It's yeah, Chess work. City. It is basically, um, I can give you a quick summary, real quick summary. It's uh, 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 downtown Atlanta, and it is, is uh, a white supremacy group that lives on one side of Atlanta, and a uh, black group that uh, gang that lives on the other side of Atlanta, and they're both competing with each other to dominate the city. And what we did was we took downtown Atlanta, uh, a map of downtown Atlanta, Put it and took the board. grid lines <clears throat> of the map and made a chessboard out of it. And then I uh, had a meeting with a chess expert who showed me uh, the 1986 uh, World Championship chess match that ended up in a stalemate. Was okay. And the purpose of the book is to zone. show that when you have blacks and whites fighting against each other, you're not really accomplishing anything. And so I wanted the end of the book to end in a stalemate, that they both lose. And, and what we did was we took uh, uh, each of the chess moves, whether it was a pawn or a queen, and by the way, one of the queens dies in the book, um, it, and every move they make on that chessboard square ends up in a grid of downtown Atlanta, and they take on a character of a person. And, and you know, whether they're robbing a bank or, you know, uh, or whether they're a lawyer. I, it, really complicated and Keith and I would Yeah, we had to research that. what the characters meant. And it, it takes a while and to it was, uh, try and sort this one out. out. So, and that, what was it? Was it the two end up, I think they end up killing like the mayor's wife or something? Or yeah, yeah, the, the two of them the, got, the, 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 the two what, gang leaders. Community, community, this lady tries to bring <laughs> peace between the two people. 
and, and they ain't just, shit to just, just when he starts to edit that part out, this is a book you refer to. It's not a real life event. Right. right. Yeah, it's right. not a real life. Okay. So they end up this community organizing to try to bring peace between these two things, right. and she's like, so none of them will admit that they were behind it. Mm -hmm. So they come up with a deal that said, okay, look, we're going to play chess. And whoever wins. And whoever wins will take the fall. Off. Okay. Whoever loses, yep. loses. And, the they, and they end, actually end up stalemating. But right. how they, what <laughs> happens after they stalemate, we but, have to But, but now, yeah, so what happens if you don't want to tell the end of the book, so the stalemate, you don't, the details aren't revealed in this comic. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, we don't know what the stalemate, how uh, You've got to pay $12. $12. <laughs> <laughs> 15 no. 20. But $2 <laughs> for the signature. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, all seriously, if, if you do need an editor, contact me, and I'll put you in touch with my wife. She's a very good editor. She's very quick. And, and, and she knows a lot of publishing companies. Well, well, another reason for the group is things like this happen, these connections, and things, things happen. Um, but, but Don stepped down a little bit early. I wanted to tie in Chris to Don. Don and Chris were here because of the reading that Chris did on the book. It has nothing to do with his position in county, but Chris uh, read the book purchased it on Amazon, downloaded it to his electronic device, read it, and I told him I'd try to get Don here today. Don was here today. And how many sales have you had like that on Amazon where people just downloaded it? On the, on the e-book? Yeah. I've had uh, several. It's been pretty good. <laughs> oh, okay. I see, I see. I two or three, one. anyhow. Two, two or three. <laughs> Over two or three. <laughs> well, uh, this, no, this it's um, uh, it, uh, the, the, the e-portion. that Most people, I've got a Kindle and a Nook. Uh, I don't care for them. Oh, I I'm, I'm, yeah, I know, but I'm older than you, and, and believe me, in about, <laughs> about 10 more years, you won't like getting no, it. No, I, 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 I've already told all my friends, give me a Kindle or give me give me a Nook. I'm selling it on eBay. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I, I'm just, I, I don't. It, it's made people lazy. I, I like the idea of uh, turning the page and not stopping until I come to that. Period on the right hand side of the page. That's that's true. That is so true. So are you saying that the newspaper will never die? The physical newspaper and the book will never pass away. It'll always be here. It'll it'll always be here. It won't may not be here as plentiful as. But it know. takes intelligent people like us to keep newspapers and books going. I, you know, I, I didn't think it, I didn't think I would be that way. Ten years ago, yeah. I was much more yeah. electronically savvy and you don't know a lot of time. and and enjoyed <laughs> electrical things and and e-readers and stuff like that 10 years ago. Now, I don't know, maybe it's something to do with age, but uh, I, I just don't, I, I don't care for it. I don't care for, I don't care for reading anything on my computer as far as the book goes. I want this, or I want a newspaper. I don't want something like this. And I have a theory that in a couple of years, they're gonna come out and they're gonna say, reading these Kindles, Messed up your eyesight. I'm serious. Think about it. You're basically looking at the computer for several hours a day. You do it in your work, and then you do it for, for, for recreation reading. They're, they're going to come up and they're going to say all that that glare has messed up eyesight. I, give it five years. For, for those of you who don't know Keith, Keith, Keith has been coming to the breakfast on and off for the last yeah. couple of years, yeah. two or three years. But about, it's about, been about a year, it was about last year, right? And, and Keith, you, are you still writing for the minority newspaper? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I still write and I do public relations for Carolina Panorama, which is one of the minority newspapers in the Columbia area. And I also work for American General, Life in General. Accident. And so, uh, I'll be glad to talk to you about your life insurance. Also. <laughs> <laughs> I always get that plug in. Sure, so, sure, uh, sure. How's, the, how's the insurance business going for you? Uh, it'd be great if uh, Phil, if I get hold of Phil, but you know. Uh, and, uh, it's a sale. Yeah, okay. I, and since there are a lot of politicians in here, I know that they probably need life insurance. Yeah. <laughs> Two dollars here for the. Yeah, in fact, especially those that did uh, send out tax bills. You know, I'm um, asking Mr. Burke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, folks. Uh, that's that's it for today. But make sure you get come up and get some cake. <laughs> hey. But Steve, I want my piece of cake. You want your piece of cake? Stand on that. That'll be $12. Stand on that. I know what I want. Oh, that happened.
Signing off for the Casey Mafia. Signing off for the Casey Mafia. See you next week. It's April 20th, 2012. Shoney's. Charleston Highway next to the airport. All characters are. She said I could do that. All right.